Hello, my name is Darren Thomas and I'm the Director of Educational Resource Techniques. In this particular video, we're going to be looking at embedded answers again, also known as closed questions. And particularly, we're going to learn how to create a short answer and close or short answer embedded answer quiz question, if you will, that we can access from the Moodle question bank. So as you can see here, I'm already logged into Moodle. And if I scroll down off to the right hand side in this particular theme of Moodle, you can see the question bank. So you click on this and it takes you to the next screen. These are questions we've made in prior videos. Now again, we're, we've been focusing on the question bank. From the question bank, you actually create your actual quizzes, but we haven't learned how to make quizzes just yet. So I'm already here and now I need to click on create new question. And again, this video is focused on embedded answers or also called closed questions. Now, for those of you who are familiar, particularly with language assessment, you know that a closed question is when in a paragraph or in a sentence, a particular word is removed and the student must add that word and their ability to add the correct word demonstrates their mastery or their knowledge of the language. This is how we use it in language assessment. And of course, you can use this in any, in any other field as you so desire. Um, the challenge here that we're facing is that when you're making closed questions or when you're making embedded answers in Moodle, it's very, very flexible. It's not only short answer, you can also do multiple choice and even numerical responses using this particular um, assessment type. Um, and so again, as you see, when I clicked on embedded answers, I have a brief little explanation about what it is. And Moodle specifically tells you about the flexibility of this type of response. You have to be a little bit familiar with some code. So now that we've done this, we're going to click add and we're going to move to the next screen. So most of this should look familiar to you. Um, you have where you have to give it the name of a question. So we're going to call ours, um, state states that's what we're going to call it and then here you have to put in the question text we'll talk about that in a second and then at the bottom you can provide feedback if you so desire and then here you can put in a penalty for multiple tries retrying the question and then tagging is just for organizing information in Moodle in general so here we go our question is going to be about states and let me make the text big for you so it's nice and big Sacramento is the capital of that's our question and then now we're going to put in our actual answer so here comes the coding part first we need to press left curly brace like so the next thing we have to do is we have to put in a one the first this number one represents the weight how much this particular question is worth so the weight is one which essentially means you know is whatever is worth one point or is a multiple of one whatever however many points you want it to be worth so one then the next thing we press is colon like so and now we have to tell Moodle what type of question it is remember we have multiple choice short answer and numerical for this video we're doing short answer so short answer now notice carefully how it's all in caps this is very very important it's often case sensitive when you're doing coding like this then we press semicolon again and now for the next piece of information we have to tell Moodle how, how many points is the answer worth or what percentage because sometimes there might be more than one answer and you might want to divide it up 50-50 or whatever. We are only going to have one possible answer. So we have to tell Moodle that that one answer is worth the full value or the 100%. To do this, you press percentage, 100, and then percentage again, like so. Next, you can put the answer. So. Sacramento is the capital of California, like so. After you type that in, you put in the right curly brace, and hopefully everything is correct. So let's just review what we did. Left curly brace, like so. Left curly brace, like I already showed you. And then we put a colon. We put the type of question that it is, short answer, another colon. We put in percentage sign 100 percentage sign like so to tell you how much this one question is worth. I mean, the, the answer is worth the value for that particular question. And then we put in the actual answer and that is how it works. So the next thing you want to do is want to decode and verify the question text. You don't have to do this, but it's good practice. And so it looks like everything is set up and we click save changes like so. 
And of course, after you make the question, you want to check to make sure it's okay. So you have it right here, the little uh, magnifying glass. You click on this to preview it. And then here we go. Sacramento is the capital of, and then you have your blank. And of course, the computer is waiting for the answer of California. That's what we're looking at. And so you can see this is the right answer right here, California. Now, again, I have to reiterate that students need to be very careful with the capitalization and also with the spelling. This is not where you can be sloppy. I, when you do a traditional closed test with paper and pencil, maybe you may desire to have a little bit of leniency and mercy in terms of the spelling and all those things like that. Moodle doesn't quite have the same tolerance, and so you have to be careful with this. So there you have it. In this particular video, we learned how to make a short answer, embedded answer question, also known as a closed question. We learned how to set up the spaces and how to put in the coding with the curly braces and the weights and the, the type of answer, etc. How you can use these type of questions is left to you and your imagination. For English teachers, for the, for the TESOL teachers and the ESL teachers, you're very familiar with this. Um, you can use make paragraphs with several different blank spaces, etc. If you're in some other discipline, you can now see how you can make quick short answer responses if you so desire in this particular way. So we hope this video was useful and we thank you for listening.